Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at this lithium iron phosphate server rack battery by Vatur. This is their second edition. Now in the past I've reviewed their golf cart battery and their first edition server rack battery, which both batteries haven't given me any issues whatsoever and they're still in use today. So this battery here, what's so unique about it is it does not come with any comms. Now they've saved money in order to bring the price point down by leaving out the comms protocol. So you might be asking yourself, well, how does it communicate with the inverter? It doesn't. You just have to set your voltage. So currently in my system, you may want to tweak this a little bit differently, but I like to have mine charge up to 57.6 volts. And then I have my float voltage sitting at about 54 and my low voltage cutoff is about 51, 50, somewhere around there. And that is perfect. That will run this battery just fine. So let's take a look at the overall battery and then I'm gonna capacity test and open it up and see what it looks like. Now taking a look at the front of the battery, if we work from left to right, you can see we have a screen, our positive terminal and our negative terminal. And we also have these little covers over top and then we have two dog ears or rabbit ears for picking up the battery. And then we also have a mini circuit breaker that's rated to 125 amps. So if we turn on the circuit breaker, that allows us to turn the screen on. And if the circuit breaker is off, then the screen goes off. This screen also times out after a certain amount of time. So once you push the button, it'll stay on for, I'm not exactly sure, maybe 30 seconds, and then it'll just time out. But the battery will keep running nonetheless. So you can see here, it is shipped with 52%, which is good. You never want to keep lithium iron phosphate at a high state of charge during storage. So maybe 50 to 80% is a good storage percentage. And you can see here we have our amps in current, our voltage of the battery, our temperature, as well as our estimated runtime. Right now there's no load, so it's just showing 999 hours. And you can see on page two, we can actually turn charging and discharging on or off uh, via the touch screen. And then you can see here we have 100 amp hours. This battery was cycled once, probably to test it in the factory. And we have our maximum temperature and our minimum temperature, our BMS status, which is 0000. 000. That is normal. And if we click on page three, you can see we have all our individual cell voltages. And you can also go through the pages just by clicking the power button. And on the side of the battery here, you can see we have some Phillips screws. You will be taking these out and then applying the rabbit ear to the side of the battery, and that way you can secure it in your server rack. Looking at the side of the battery, we have the brand name, and we have the amount of energy. There's a QR code to scan to get the app for the battery, as well as a serial number that you can find inside of the app in order to connect to the battery. On the back, there is nothing. On the side, there is another place to connect the rabbit ear to connect to the cabinet. This is the bare bones, this is what you get. So this server rack battery is in the 48 volt category of batteries. Although because of its chemistry of lithium iron phosphate, the voltage is a little higher. So the nominal voltage is 51.2. Now this is 100 amp hours. So it can actually do 100 amps of charge and 100 amps of discharge. Although the company does recommend that you only do 20 amps of charging. It's just gonna help the battery last a lot longer. According to their website, this battery can do 5,000 plus charge cycles. That means completely discharging the battery and then recharging it back up. So far superior to lead acid. Now this actually comes with the app as well. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I have the app open here and you can see we have different Bluetooth connections and I'm gonna look for the DWC1. Da, 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 da. Yep, that's the one. Oh, and actually I think the one just below it is the uh, previous server rack battery that I have going right now. Okay, we can see here 52%. We can see that our charge MOSFETs are on, our discharge MOSFETs are on, balancing is off currently because we're not charging and we're not above a certain voltage. Protection's normal and you can see all the stats there. A lot of the same stats that are on the display, which is nice. And overall, very nice. Just to take a look, let's connect to the battery that I actually have in service right now. And you can see to the battery, this the older model to this one's at uh, 76%. And we are currently discharging at uh, 2.8 amps or 148.4 watts. So that's rather neat. I've done 29 cycles through this battery. 
So let's connect back to, to this battery here. Okay, now let's hook up a charger to this and see what the app does, because I need this battery at a full state of charge in order to do my capacity test. Okay, take a look at the app. Let's plug this in. All right, and you can see on the app there that we are charging with 16.4 amps or 800 and 80.2 watts. So I'm gonna let this charge up and we'll take a look at the app again once it's fully charged and see what that voltage cell differential gets to. Maybe a little bit high because it needs to cycle a few times to balance the cells out, which the BMS will take care of. But let's uh, leave that go and we'll be back in a little while when it's fully charged. Now you can see here on the app, our cell differential is 0 0.095 and dropping because the battery is going to rest and it is currently balancing. You can see the balancing says on. So this battery will balance itself out even better over some time. Let's see what happens. Right now we have, it says 101 amp hours out of 100. So that's a good sign from that first initial cycle that they've done at the factory. It's still showing above the amount of amp hours. Let's see if it got any better from the balancing that I just did while I was charging. Now this is the app I'm using. Uh, this is part of the smart shunt that I have hooked up that is going to keep track of the amp hours. And at the bottom left hand side, you can see their elapsed amp hours value. That is going to tell me how many amp hours travel through there. So we can see if this has true 100 amp hours and they're using good cells. So let's start that up. Now, whenever you're using a lithium battery and you're connecting it to a device like an inverter, there's capacitors inside of here that need to charge up before you put the full load on them. These uh, inverters are mostly used with lead acid and there's resistance, but with lithium iron phosphate, there is no resistance. As soon as I flick the switch on or make that connection, I'll get a big spark unless I pre-charge the capacitors. So I have a pre-charge resistor already wired into my setup here. And you'll see once I push my button, so now we're charged up. Don't tell me I just broke this one too. Okay, I didn't do it properly. I think I might've just burnt out another inverter. I had the inverter set to the on position when it should have been turned off. Okay, let's try charging that up, turning the breaker on. Nope. Okay, I burnt out another inverter. One moment. Well, I don't have another 48 volt inverter on hand, so I'm gonna have to order one on Amazon and I'm gonna do this test again after. So what I had done was I didn't turn off the inverter and then run the power through and then have it come on. So it sent a jolt of energy into it and burnt this inverter out. And I've been using this for a long time, at least a couple of years now. So it was probably time to replace it. Let me order a new inverter and we'll be right back. Okay, take two on trying to do the capacity test. Okay, and I'm ready to actually start discharging now. So you can see 100%. We have a cell differential of 0.023. That's because this battery has been at rest for a little while. So the voltage has come down, even though it's fully charged, I'm seeing 53.7 volts. That's gonna be the sag. So I charged it and it's been sitting for a little while. So the voltage sagged down a little bit. It'll probably stay steady at 53.7 now. We are back over here to our page that's gonna show our smart shunt uh, amp hour cumulative. So that is on. Now I'm gonna run through this. Now the inverter is off. So pre-charge the capacitors. I think that's been long enough. Turn on. Now I should be able to turn on the inverter. It's a little bit of an odd turn on switch there. Now I'm gonna plug in the charger or my load. So now you can see we're discharging 20.65, 20.67, eight. So as the voltage goes down, the amperage is gonna go up a little bit, but it's not gonna affect the test. You can see there at the bottom left, 0 0.207, 13, 18, 24, blah, blah. So that is gonna keep up the accumulative amp hours. And I will let you know at the end if this did reach the full 100 amp hour capacity, and if in fact they're using good cells. That's, this is a good way to test that. And the discharge test is now complete. As you can see, we have 104.601 amp hours 
out of the 100 amp hour battery. So this test is a pass. Let's get to opening it up. Before I open up the server rack battery, I'd just like to mention in the packet, you do get two of the rabbit ears. These do get installed here on the sides. And then when you mount it to your server rack, that's gonna secure it into place. Also get these clear covers. These go over top of where the lugs go to provide some protection. So get a couple six gauge wire. So we get a six gauge wire, positive and negative. We also get the hardware in order to mount the rabbit ears. Get a five year warranty card, as well as you get the manual for the server rack battery. Okay, so to open it up, it looks like I have some screws across the top, Phillips, and down the sides and the back. So I'll undo those and open this top lid. Very nice. You can see on the camera, I've got the BMS down here. Got this cover plate up here. That is very nice. I'm gonna undo these and this here, and I'm gonna take these two pieces of metal off so I can get this black piece out. Okay, these bolts here, they are smooth on the bottom here. They do have some nylon in here that uh, is gonna act as a Loctite. I'm gonna keep that down onto the thread there. And this is one metal bar. So that was rather neat. I like this. So they have the bar here coming across that's holding the cells down. And then they have this bar here that's holding the cells down. And then they have these bars that come across here. Not going to short circuit anything, nope. And this bar comes down, ties in where the BMS connects, as well as the cell in the cell. So this is very well designed. If I want to see what type of cells these are, I'm going to have to remove each one of these bus bars, remove this bar, remove this bar, and then there's this plastic cell holder that's going to come up so I can see the cells. I'm not going to go through all that trouble. This just looks fantastic, the build quality. All of their batteries I've ever seen look like they are very well done. As you can see, all of these have been marked. Somebody has come by and verified that these are torqued to spec. We have leads here, all the volt sensing leads, and they're glued and screwed down. Temperature sensors, where are they gonna be? And we got all the spiral wrap and it's all nicely routed and it routes over. I mean, nothing is pinched. Nothing is pinched, everything's nice. Okay, I have a temperature sensor right here. Kind of surprised I don't have a second one. Now the one temperature sensor is good, but it would have been nice to have a second one. Oh, and I can see here too, this is good. The battery cable lug, and then we have voltage sensing wire ring terminal after, and then the nut on top. I don't know how many times I've seen that sensing cable under the lug and you want the lug directly onto the cell for the best performance. We can see there's the BMS. So I will take a picture of that and do Google Translate and see what that says. You can see NTC. So you can actually see there's two different temperature sensors coming out of there. I'll find the other one in a minute. Very nice, so this comes out. That's gonna be the negative lug. And then the positive comes through. You can see they put it in here and then they glued it as well. So that's definitely not coming out. And that's the mini circuit breaker. And then this is gonna be the display here and the positive terminal. And we have a wire coming off. There's the Bluetooth down there. That's gonna be the Bluetooth dongle. Okay, this positive here coming from here runs over to power the display. So that's why you have to have this breaker on in order for the display to come on. So if this breaker's off, there will be no power coming from this positive terminal to power it. So if you not know if you don't know why your display is not turning on, it's because your mini circuit breaker is not on. Okay, let's see if I can see where that second temperature sensor goes. Okay, there's one. That's the one here. One, oh, it's right down here. Second temperature sensor, as you can see, the glue right there is down here on where the BMS is. So we have one on the cells and one on the BMS. So this is going to be well near the BMS, so this is gonna be like ambient. And then this is gonna be temperature sensor. Now this sensor here though, this glue is really good, oh, there we go. Okay, so that's the temperature sensor. And the temperature was, sensor was just sitting on top of this plastic cell holder bracket thing here. So that's not really the greatest place for a temperature sensor, is just sitting on top of this plastic. It's not onto the cells. I would have liked to have seen this maybe glued onto the bus bar, and then that way it'll get you the temperature of the core of the battery. Either that, or if they had it tucked in down, 
So we don't have a temperature sensor on the actual cells itself. So that is about the only downside I see of this build quality is that the temperature sensor isn't directly on the cells. It is just picking up ambient temperature on top of the plastic cell holder. But nonetheless, this is a server rack battery. This is for indoor home use. You're not gonna be putting this battery into a, an RV or something like that. I mean, you could, but I doubt very many people are gonna be doing that. This is gonna be for in your home. It's already gonna be temperature controlled. So I don't see that as a big deal, but it would have been nice if it was connected directly to the cells. So let's test the cold temperature protection anyways, and see if those uh, temperature probes will shut the battery down if there is a cold temperature event. Okay, so you can see on the display here, we are charging. Let's bring up the app too, so we can see. Okay, you can see I have charged the battery back up a little bit to 54%. And where is it going? Okay, you can see protection there. Okay, let's go to the temperature sensors there. So we have one, two, and three. Oh yeah, you can see there we're at nine. Seven, six, we're still charging. And we should be disconnecting shortly, as soon as we hit zero. Okay, and we've just passed zero. There we go. Okay, so before we got to one degree, or negative one degree Celsius, and you can see there under protection. Now let's warm this back up. And we're back to normal and we're back to charging. Let's try a high temperature test. Okay, I think that was around 85 degrees Celsius. There may have been a delay um, due to it activating. So it might be lower, might be more like around 60, 70 maybe degrees Celsius. And if we scroll back up, you can see Okay, we just clicked back on and the temperature, yeah, was 58. So I would say the protection's set at about 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I am going to get this battery all back together and I'm gonna get it fitted into my server rack cabinet and I'm gonna put it into use. Now, if I have any issues in the future, I'm definitely 100% gonna fire up the camera and let you guys know about it. So if you're looking for a cost-effective battery, and you and your system don't need the communications between the BMS and the inverter, like I'm doing on my system. Before I had this inverter, the FlexBoss 21, I was running a grow watt, and that's all I did was off of voltage and never had any issues. This is going to be the Vatter server rack battery, their newest model. It's a pass in my books. If you want to look at them closer, I'll leave links in the description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, have a good day. Bye.